you Google teen mental health crisis, you'll find article after article proclaiming that we have a serious problem, a very serious problem. According to statistics published online concerning mass shootings with three or more innocent victims, we in the United States had 14 such shootings from 1982 through 1992 and 69 such shootings from 2012 through 2022, more than four times as many, almost five times as many as just a few decades earlier. Why are there so many sick minds today? Welcome to Bible Nooks Worship Service. Pastor David Reed has authored numerous Christian books, served as a contributing editor of Dr. Walter Martin's Christian Research Journal, taught at Spurgeon's in London, and pastored Emmanuel Baptist Church in New Bedford, Mass. He now provides these worship services for individuals at home, and free to use by small groups and churches. Let's ask the Lord's blessing on our service. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can turn to you in times when the world is troubled. We thank you that we can turn to you in times when our lives are troubled. And we thank you, Lord, that we can turn to you at times when there seems to be no solution to the problems that we and others around us face. We thank you for putting solutions in the Bible and for putting your wisdom there and for encouraging us to turn to you knowing that you have everything under control and that in the end everything will turn out well according to your will so we thank you lord for the opportunity to meet together to hear your word and to be refreshed and and to grow in our understanding of your word and what it tells us about the world we live in we pray your blessing now on this service and each one who joins us in jesus name amen Let's join together now in singing Abide With Me. And as we do, let's make these lyrics our own prayer. Abide with me holds the even tide the darkness deepens Lord with me abide when other helpers fail and comfort flee help of the helpless Oh, abide with me. Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O oh, thou who changest not, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour what but thy grace can foil the tempter's power who like thyself my guide and stay can be through cloud 
and sunshine, Lord, abide with me. I fear no foe with the attempt to bless. Ills have no weight and tears no bitterness. Where is death's sting? Where grape thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide with me. O thou thy cross before my closing eyes shine through the gloom and point me to the skies heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee in life in death O oh Lord abide with me the Lord's prayer has long served as an example for our own personal prayers let's pray those words together now our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our services and sermons are reaching thousands of people, and Deacon Joe Oje and I are interacting with many who respond online. Your gifts help our defense of the gospel reach a wide audience. You can be a part of this work by visiting BibleNook.com and clicking the Donate button on the home page. Today's scripture reading is found in 2 Peter chapter 3, beginning with the third verse. Most importantly, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. Where is the promise of his coming, they will ask. Ever since our fathers fell asleep, Everything continues as it has from the beginning of creation. But they deliberately overlook the fact that long ago, by God's word, the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water, through which the world of that time perished in the flood. And by that same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Beloved, do not let this one thing escape your notice. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and its works will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to conduct yourselves in holiness and godliness as you anticipate and hasten the coming of the day of God, when the heavens will be destroyed by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with God's promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. 
May the Lord add his blessing to our reading of his word. Now let's sing together Beneath the Cross. If you Google teen mental health crisis, you'll find article after article proclaiming that we have a problem, a serious problem. Just looking at a smattering of them, we find on the website of radio station WMNF an article titled, The Kids Are Not All Right, The Crisis in Teen Mental Health. It says schools are often the place where teens' mental health problems manifest, whether it's acting out violently or being a victim of bullying and having suicidal thoughts. A publication of Harvard Medical School titles its article, The Mental Health Crisis Among Children and Teens, How Parents Can Help. And it says, we are in the midst of a pediatric mental health crisis and parents need to take action. The Google search turns up other articles with similar titles, addressing the teen mental health crisis, understanding the teen mental health crisis, teenage mental health grades are failing, what should be done, the state of the teen mental health crisis and how to help. Psychology Today's article is titled, The Real Crisis of Teen Mental Health, an advisory on youth mental health crisis issued by the United States Surgeon General says, mental health challenges in children, adolescents, and young adults are real and widespread. Even before the pandemic, an alarming number of young people struggled with feelings of helplessness, depression, and thoughts of suicide, and rates have increased over the past decade. An article at addictions.com is titled, Why is Teenage Mental Illness Soaring? A New York Times article is titled, It's Life or Death, the Mental Health Crisis Among U.S. Teens. Another New York Times article titled, 
is teen mental health in a state of crisis says from 2001 to 2019 the suicide rates of american youngsters from ages 10 to 19 jumped 40 percent and emergency room visits for self-harm rose 88 percent all of these articles reflect a real change but it's interesting to note that none of them suggest that outlawing knives is the solution to stopping young people from cutting themselves. According to statistics published online concerning mass shootings with three or more innocent victims, we in the United States had 14 such shootings from 1982 through 1992, and 69 such shootings from 2012 through 2022, more than four times, almost five times as many as just a few decades earlier. If we match those statistics to the prevalence of guns in American households, we find that 47% of households had guns in 1982, compared to 42% of households with guns now. So the availability of guns has actually gone down while mass shootings have skyrocketed up. After the horrific shooting at the elementary school, Texas Governor Greg Abbott said, the ability of an 18-year-old to buy a long gun has been in place in the state of Texas for more than 60 years. And think about during that time, over the course of that 60 years, we have not had episodes like this. He continued, one thing that has substantially changed is the status of mental health in our communities. What I do know is this, we as a state, as a society, need to do a better job with mental health. Anybody who shoots somebody else has a mental health challenge, period. So the root of the problem is in human hands and human minds, not in the weapons that sick minds grasp in their hands. Why, though, are there so many sick minds today? That is the real question. We've spoken before about the emotional damage, the mental harm done to infants when they're put into daycare. Psychologist Dr. Miriam Adahan writes, the unspoken message when a parent drops the child off is, your needs are not important. You don't really matter. Children make their own conclusions based on their experiences. Abandoned babies learn to believe, I must not be worthy of love if no one loves me. Could this be one reason that prescriptions for mood stabilizers has risen 4,000% in the last 10 years? Aggression. Many children become nasty and rebellious. Even before youngsters enter the public education system. Many of them are severely damaged emotionally by the lack of parental attention and bonding. Close and constant parental care was God's arrangement for thousands of years for child rearing, and it still is God's arrangement. He enforced it down through history by requiring mothers to breastfeed their babies and to constantly mind toddlers. Young children were always with their parents 24 seven, and that's what it took for them to develop normally. Seeing parents for just a few minutes in the morning and in the evening results in a child that is emotionally neglected. Dr. Adahan also writes, the brain patterns and chemical makeup of neglected and abused children are different from well-loved children. For example, neglected babies have higher levels of cortisol, a stress hormone, and lower levels of vasopressin and oxytocin, the two social bonding hormones. High cortisol levels cause them to feel anxious around people, thus reinforcing their certainty that I can't trust, people will hurt me. Something is very wrong with me. And she adds that since chemicals and brain patterns are involved, 
Not all of this damage can be reversed. According to Dr. Adahan, not all of this damage can be reversed. With so many children in our society raised by daycare workers, rather than by attentive and loving parents, many are mentally damaged and emotionally handicapped long before they enter public education. But since youngsters spend six or more hours per day in public school classrooms, we need to look also at what goes on there. Changes in public education have happened gradually over a number of decades. Many of those changes were set in motion long ago by a single individual, the philosopher John Dewey. John Dewey is universally regarded as the father of modern education. The 1961 edition of Will Durant's book, The Story of Philosophy, says this about the man who shaped modern education. <clears throat> what distinguished Dewey was the undisguised completeness with which he accepted the evolution theory. Mind as well as body was to him an organ evolved in the struggle for existence from lower forms. His starting point in every field was Darwinism. And in order for, to base education on Darwin and evolution, Dewey had to push aside God and the Bible. Before Dewey's influence, public education in the United States still reflected its Christian origins. A is for Adam, children learned when they were taught their ABCs. But as schools across the country adopted Dewey's philosophy of education, they replaced A as for Adam with A as for Apple. Colleges and universities that trained new generations of school teachers indoctrinated those teachers in Dewey's ideas. Peking University in Beijing, China continues to celebrate Dewey's influence on the education system in that communist country. But few Americans realize how that one man reshaped American education from Christian to anti-Christian. <clears throat> what does that have to do with the mental health of today's young people? What does that have to do with the symptoms that manifest themselves through mass shootings, teenage suicide, mental breakdowns, and epidemic drug use. The educational system fails to teach young people a worldview that they need to be emotionally stable. Instead of teaching them that we are the children of a loving creator, a heavenly father who wishes the best for them, the schools teach them that we descended from primitive microorganisms that came to life accidentally in a mud puddle eons ago. Instead of being obligated to obey our Creator, the schools teach them that we can choose our own way in life. And today that includes choosing a gender different from the gender of the bodies they were born with. Instead of learning stability and responsibility, they're taught flexibility and freedom in areas of life that leave them unstable and confused. Both in and outside of school, kids today are also surrounded by the youth subculture of their peers. They're subject to abuse and bullying. Peer pressure pushes them to adopt the morals and lifestyles of other kids who have emotional problems of their own. The lack of discipline in school and in after-school settings leaves kids open to sexual activity and drug abuse. Without enough contact with their parents to learn the moral values of older generations, they pick up the loose morals of celebrity role models and questionable people they encounter through electronic media. So preschool youngsters start out feeling unloved by the daycare workers who raise them. And then they move on to elementary school and beyond where their feelings of insecurity and instability continue to grow. The most disturbed among them use social media to connect with others like themselves, where they plan and prepare for episodes of violence. What's the solution? 
What's the solution for a society where so much of the population has grown up not fearing God and not following the Bible's moral standards? The Bible does offer a solution, but it's not a solution that we can implement by joining local school boards or trying to reform our laws or trying to reform our education system. The only example I see in scripture that will resolve the problems we face today is the one found in Genesis chapter six, beginning with verse 11. Now the earth was corrupt in the sight of God and full of violence. And God looked upon the earth and saw that it was corrupt for all living creatures on the earth had corrupted their ways. Then God said to Noah, the end of all living creatures has come before me, because through them the earth is full of violence. Now behold, I will destroy both them and the earth. Make for yourself an ark. Yes, when it happened long ago that human society became violent and corrupt, God's solution was to send the worldwide flood of Noah's day. The earth was so corrupt and filled with violence that God told Noah, Behold, I will bring floodwaters upon the earth to destroy every creature under the heavens that has the breath of life. Everything on the earth will perish. And that took care of the problem. Mankind got a fresh start after the flood. But God promised Noah that he would not send another worldwide flood. So when Sodom and Gomorrah adopted the practices that we see glorified in today's gay pride parades, the practices that our public schools and our electronic media now teach our youngsters to accept and practice, when Sodom and Gomorrah acted that way, God destroyed them with fire from heaven. And when the inhabitants of the land of Canaan centuries later again corrupted themselves, God instructed the people of Israel to wipe them out and take over their land. So the Bible shows us over and over again that God's solution to a society that's corrupt and filled with violence and sexual immorality is to step in with catastrophic destruction. Could that really be God's solution for our violent and immoral world today? Yes, the Apostle Peter says it is. In his second letter, Peter refers back to the flood of Noah's day as an example of what is to come and says, the world of that time perished in the flood. And by that same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. So yes, the New Testament warns of an Old Testament style destruction of our world today. God has not changed from who he was in the Old Testament. A world that has turned away from God and become perverted, corrupt, and filled with violence faces destruction today, just like the world before the flood. The Apostle Paul speaks of the same coming destruction when he writes at 1 Thessalonians 5, 2, The day of the Lord's return will come unexpectedly, like a thief in the night. When people are saying everything is peaceful and secure, then disaster will fall on them. Yes, disaster and destruction is the only solution the Bible offers for this world that has rejected God. But you can escape the coming destruction by turning now to Jesus. A few verses earlier, Paul wrote of what has come to be called the rapture. When Christ returns to destroy this wicked world, he'll first rescue everyone who belongs to him. Paul wrote at 1 Thessalonians 4.19, The Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. First, the believers who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air. We will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, 
before complete and utter destruction hits this planet. When will this happen? No man knows the day or the hour, but the end times events foretold in the Bible are falling into place. The signs Jesus gave to watch for for his return are happening in the world today. And this world is ripe for destruction, as were Sodom and Gomorrah and the world before Noah's flood. If you know the Lord, now is the time to share the gospel with all who will listen. If you are unsure, now is the time to check out the evidence that the Bible is true. Now is the time to turn to Jesus, so you will be among those raptured to safety before a world filled with violence meets its foretold destruction. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the things recorded in your word. We thank you, Lord, for recording example after example of what you did to deal with violent and corrupt societies in the past. And we thank you for the information in the New Testament telling what will happen when Christ returns. Help us, please, Lord, to put faith in your words, to see the evidence and to believe, and to know that there is a solution for this world, although it's a drastic and powerful solution that only you can bring. And we pray for that time to come soon, when your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven, when your kingdom comes. In Jesus' name, amen. When we have the hope that only Christ gives, our hearts are inclined to thank him. Let's do so now as we lift our voices in, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word to instruct us, and we thank you for your putting your Holy Spirit inside us to strengthen us to face this world, and we thank you for putting your gospel on our lips that we might share it with others. Please lead us now as we go out into the world, remembering the things of your word and keeping our eyes on you. In Jesus' name, amen. God be with you till we meet again. Lord be with you till we meet again. By his counsels guide uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again.